And then we made several procedures on our cell, and we were able to reduce the energy, inlet energy, going uh, uh, left, without uh, um, reducing also a little bit the, um, the temperature of the, of the cell. And in the end, we were able to uh, bring the cell at 300 degrees, because you have to add the ambient temperature in this graph, with almost no inlet power. Uh, this point is not at zero because we consider the energy spent for the Pitticento to check the, the, the temperature. But anyway, no inlet power was given to warm the cell. These During a primer with a suitable power supply system of the platinum resistance, which we use in these experiments, and the platinum resistance uh, increases its electrical resistance linearly with temperature. <coughs> with stabilized constant voltage, we see the temperature rise almost instantly, even up 100 degrees, and then and, uh, introduce current decrease. This is more easy to see in this kind of graphs uh, over here. So we see that uh, in introduced power decrease after the temperature increase is a consequence of the platinum resistance. And uh, also the current decreases of more than one ampere. It can be seen that the input power decreases while the temperature rises. Moreover, the temperature remains around the reached value for months with fluctuation smaller than 5%. These are some of the experimental results obtained and published in 23 years of work. Now it is necessary to perform the most difficult and key experiment. About this we had a lot of delays, partly due to the complexity of the phenomenon and partly due to the chronic lack of the necessary instrumentation capable of, to detect in a correct way all the numerous parameters. In these 23 years, there were many researchers, more than 160, and theorists who tried to explain the phenomenon with very free spirit and imagination to identify a mathematical path in order to find the source of the facts and the results. In order to clarify the situation, it is necessary to refer again to Galileo and his rule. The first rule is the sensata esperienza, sensible experience, which must be repeatable. If the experiment is not repeatable, then is, uh, there's no internal consistency. The second rule concerns intuition and assumption, axioms, which must respect some limitation to be possible and acceptable. We look at the results obtained in, obtained in many labs. We can see that there are at least three groups of very intriguing experimental results, all of them repeatedly found together in almost all the experiments. These results obtained in many labs, not only our labs, of course, can be summarized in uh, an excess of thermal energy with respect to simple chemical physical reactions. In this case, it is necessary to remove this simple chemical physical reaction as we did and as I showed you before. Otherwise, one can see what is not, as happened recently. It is important to know that those parasites phenomena take place both in gas and electrochemical experiments. Alpha particle detection, detection simultaneously with the excess energy production. Detection of new elements which weren't present in the sample before the experiments. 
Other more sporadic facts are the emission of a few, thankfully, neutrons, X or gamma photons. Other measurements, such as the activity after sample extraction, seem maybe less important for a first approach. Even if the detection of charged particles, both during the experiments and after the sample extraction, are not a secondary aspect. <coughs> Every explanation attempt must interpret all the described results without exception. Moreover, it is necessary that the starting hypothesis are real and not just fantasy. An example based on physics laws and quantum mechanics statements, in particular conservation laws. For example, a violation of a principle of conservation can be accepted. If a new particle or a new situation is assumed, it is necessary that this new particle or situation is experimentally detected without any doubt. The lack of experimental verification, even in presence of a correct and perfect mathematical path and description, is a sign of inconsistency. Questo mondo non ha da essere un pezzo di carta, diceva Galileo. This world should not be a world of paper. To give you some example, an explanation based on weak interaction must show where the necessary energy comes from and uh, all must be experimentally detected. An explanation based on strong interaction or similar must explain how it is possible to overcome the high potential barrier and why the characteristic products are lacking. An explanation based on a new cluster among atoms or nuclei must explain why these clusters were never seen or detected besides the lacking of the typical products. An explanation based on weak interaction must show where the necessary energy comes from and why the typical particles were never detected. Every hypothesis must be always experimentally verified. The complexity of the anomalous phenomenon can be deducted from a short list of some of the parameters we have to study. The transition metals involved, the minimum working temperature which depends on the, on the metal, the maximum temperature beyond which the phenomenon stops because of the destruction of the essential conditions, the primer action modes and the star technique, the pressure modulation of the hydrogen, the best and suitable geometry for the cell, structure, size and stability of the used metal and more. The complexity of the process requires a systematic and well-coordinated study among the researchers in labs equipped with the necessary instrumentation to perform measurements before, during, and after the experiments. And I can tell you that some of these uh, uh, instrumentation still have to be built. They are simply not present in the market. We have to think about something. As an example of the difficulties during the process elements with short life, about 81 seconds are produced. As a consequence, it is necessary to perform a measurement in a very short time, up to 10 minutes, after extraction of the sample from the cell. If we want to detect them, of course, the difficulty of the necessary measurement requires quality detectors. As a consequence, it is not possible to perform this kind of experiment in a garage or in a cupboard, as has happened in the recent past. 
Expensive detectors are therefore necessary. As a consequence, it is not possible to reach the goal of understanding the anomalous phenomenon with some more or less improvised cell. For the same reason, it is not possible to produce, to produce a commercial product without the necessary knowledge of all the parameters ruling the anomalous phenomenon. All these things send away the goal. These so complex studies and investigations are not possible for an improvised laboratory. In order to face the problem, it is necessary to create a large group of qualified researchers who decide that a common working program, for example, a well-calibrated project including many correlated experiments, each one facing a different aspect of the problem. The obtained result should be discussed altogether, as usual, for research projects in physics. The critical number of researchers necessary to solve this problem is so high that, is, that it is not possible to think that each one can solve it all alone. It is not possible to reach the goal with claimed repetition of the experiments in different labs, too many parameters, and not all of them has, have been discovered and identified. It is better to coordinate complementary self-consistent experiments. The fundamental thing is the internal cons consistency of the results. It is not possible to repeat a so complex experiment without knowing all the ranges of all the used parameters. Many experiments performed in special laboratories are unique and they can't be reproducible in other laboratories because of the complexity and expense of the institution. In your case, complexity and large amount of parameters make this repetition very difficult and complex, at least up to now. From the analysis of the results collected in 23 years, it is possible to think to a positive connection between this research field with some of the unsolved problems and incomplete problems in fission plants. Due to the complexity of the problems, we can also cite the possibility of a comparative study taking to the reduction of some problems as nuclear waste related to the future chain of subcritical systems. Concerning the research field directly to abnormal phenomena, the problem of unwise claims and carelessness technology, the desire to be at limelight at all costs can take us back 50 years. When the business won and fission plants started to be built, even if the necessary studies to make safe and reliable plants were not enough really developed. Now a similar effect is taking place in this field of research because someone wants the product at every cost even if the scientific and technical knowledge are scarce and very approximate. The media pressure is very high on us and in Provident because it creates unrealistic expectation with unpredictable consequences on the possible developments. Nobody knows how the working cycle is long and someone wants to put it inside houses and industrial plants. I don't know how someone can buy a product without knowing the duration and the amount of product producing energy. And thank you for your attention. I hope I answered some of your questions and have satisfied some of your curiosity. Thank you for your presentation in which you explain very clearly the complexity of the phenomena and the perspective of the next step in, term, in terms of uh, open question and the required methodology.